Hello everyone, this is Harley from RNFL, and today we are going to do an uh, April tour walk around of our anonas here in Bradenton, Florida. Now, anonas are one of my favorite fruits. I love all anonas. And here in my house in Bradenton, Florida, I want to do as much as I can to collect at least one of every species. Now, I know that is impossible, but at least with the good species that I like to eat, such as atemodias, cherryladas, you know, reticuladas, soursops, relinias, and I actually have a lot of that around my house. And so we're going to start tour off beginning with this sugar apple. Now this is actually an Adai Vietnamese sugar apple. So here we have a better look at this Adai Vietnamese sugar apple. Now I actually have many sugar apples here at my house. This is actually just one of them that I have here in the Anona section and one of the main Anona sections. As you see this is the Adai sugar apple and the Adai sugar apple is known to be the Vietnamese variety so it's also known for being very chewy and easy to peel. And this one, in this particular sugar apple tree, we fruited heavily last season. So this season I decided to cut it back like almost literally halfway and I decided to just let it grow vegetatively. We're not gonna let it fruit for another two to three years and just let the tree grow out big. Just, just by fruiting the sugar apple so young, we kind of stunted it just a little bit, but nonetheless, it'll be all right just because it has a really good spot to grow and we'll provide all the nutrients for it to grow bigger. So moving on from this sugar apple, we now have the Gefner atemodia. Now this Gefner atemodia I recently planted, you know, literally about a week ago. And this Gefner atemodia I'm really looking forward to just because it has a really good spot here in my yard. And you know, I might actually trim these back, the sugar apple and other plants out more just to make more room for this Gefner because just of how much I like Gefner. And Gefner is actually known for being a self-pollinating atemodia variety. So if you don't know anything about hand pollinating or if you're nervous to attempt it, although it's very easy, I recommend getting a Gefner just because it might be a little easier for beginners to you know, start off growing anonas. So here's a better look at the Gefner atemodia. As you see, the base of the atemodia is a pretty thin. You know, it's not too thin, but we'll let it grow for a good two to three years before we actually fruit it heavily, just because I've actually killed a uh, Lisa atemodia before by fruiting it so heavily. So we're actually just gonna wait on these atemojas, let them grow, you know, to their size, let the roots really develop. But as you see, this Gefner atemoja is really pretty. There was actually a caterpillar in here that I caught at night uh, eating the, the leaves, or <laughs> I removed it. But luckily I caught it just because it was already trying to do damage on this Gefner, you know. But as you see, it's just a really pretty atemoja. I really love the leaves of the Gefner atemoja, as you see. They're actually very smooth and fuzzy when they're new, but anona leaves are really delicate at first, so I wouldn't recommend, you know, touching them too much. But as you see, this Gefner atemoja currently as of April 14th, 2021, stands about, I would say around three, three and a half feet to four feet. So it's pretty baby right now. It's still a baby, you know, we still have to let it grow a lot. But overall, I'm really looking forward to nursing it just because Gefner atemoja is one that, it's just a classic atemoja taste. It's very chewy, sweet, and has a really beautiful and delicate meat. So I'm really looking forward to you know, growing this and just grafting more atemodias in the future. So yeah, I really like this Gefner atemodia. So moving on, we are gonna go to the cherry lada. Now, some of you may be very familiar with this cherry lada tree. Some of you may have not. So cherry lada is actually a hybrid between a cherry moya and a reticulata, a known reticulata. So this tree overall, just one of my favorite anonas here at my house, actually just because it is able to handle our winters here in Bradenton, Florida very easily. This anona literally didn't lose a leaf and it was almost evergreen you know, throughout a whole winter. And right now it is currently loaded with flowers. So I'm really looking forward to it, to, you know, flowering within these next few months. It should be about a month, a month and a half to see the blooms, you know, more abundantly and, you know, start smelling them and even pollinating them. So I'm really looking forward overall to this cherry lotta to grow. So as you see here is where the cherry lotta tree is at my house. And as you see all over, the cherry lotta is just currently pushing out new blooms. And not only that, but the cherry lotta is also loaded with baby flowers all over. So I'm really looking forward to this and this season. Now it is crazy. Cherry lotta is literally one of the earliest anona trees at my house to produce flowers. You know, this much flowers, but also this tree last year was overall just a really vigorous grower. Like just look at all these flowers on this cherry lotta. Literally on every branch, there's about a flower or a new growth pushing out. So I'm really looking forward to you know, this cherry lotta and also grafting them too because I've been grafting them and all the grafts I've been taking so far. So now moving on from the cherry lotta, we're gonna check out this Anona reticulata right here. Now Anona reticulata is what is part of the cherry lotta genetics. So this is a Anona reticulata tree right here. Now this Anona reticulata is not only pushing out new growth all over, but I also did graft two cherry lotta cyans and they do seem to be pushing out strong growth. And as you can see, this Anona reticulata tree towers me, you know, a little bit, like about a foot or so. I'm about six foot and this is about maybe seven and a half feet tall. So overall, I already trimmed this Anona reticulata tree, but it's already pushing out a lot of strong new growth. 
So let's check it out a little more. As you see right here is where the unknown and reticulata tree is. It's still in the front of my property, but as you see all over it is just pushing out new growth as well. Similar to the cherry lata, but this one I don't see any flowers or just not as much flowers as a cherry lata tree. But I think maybe later in the season or when we get more rains is when we'll see it flower more. You know, but overall all the tips of the unknown and reticulata are just pushing out some sort of growth. And just to show you, so we're gonna try to see if we can see the cherry lata graft pushing out on this one, it's kind of hard to focus in on it because it's just, it's just a little bud pushing for now. But as you see right there is the cherry lotta bud pushing out. It's very, very tiny. I'm trying to see if we can focus in on it better. But as you see right there is the little bud. And overall, this cherry lotta tree, or overall this reticulata tree is doing really good here. I planted it actually last year. And this reticulata variety is actually a seedling of a red custard apple. Now this red custard apple came here from Bradenton, Florida. So I'm actually not sure of the exact or origins of this custard apple tree, but it is a seedling and it was flowering last year, but I actually wasn't able to set any fruit just because it was my first time planting it in the ground. And I wanted to focus it more on root growth. But overall, as you see, this reticulata tree is just doing really good. And the bark on the reticulata is kind of easy to distinguish, uh, you know, amongst other anonas because the bark is kind of like wrinkly like this. That's how you kind of distinguish a reticulata from other anona trees. So moving on from this reticulata tree, we're gonna move we're gonna move more over into over here. Now right over here is actually where I have more atemoyas, although you can't really see them. So believe it or not, but this is actually a pet pack chong atemoya. So as you see right over here, this is my pet pack chong atemoya. Now this atemoya actually planted here about two months ago. Now this pet pack chong atemoya is I believe grafted onto cherimoya rootstock. And I actually got this pet pack chong from my friend Leaf in West Palm Beach. As you see overall, let's look at the graft union. As you see, this is where it was grafted right here. You can see the union of where pet pack chong was grafted onto. But overall this tree is just doing really good. I love the beautiful leaves of the Pepec Chong Atemoya. They're kind of like a round, slender uh, cherimoya leaf, but they still are like really long. So overall, I just really love this tree. And the fruit is what I'm really looking forward to. Now this Pepec Chong Atemoya, I'm not looking even forward to getting fruit for another maybe two to three years, maybe even three to four years. But I really want to grow this Pepec Chong tree out to a beautiful canopy and just have it filled with Pepec Chong fruits. I really want to prune this so it has a you know really thick trunk overall and i actually have another pet pet chong atemoya believe it or not right next to it now the reason why i have another one it's not right next to it but it's a it's a few feet it's a few feet away from it now let's say maybe around eight feet but over here as you see this pet pet chong atemoya it's not as big as that one because the other one i planted actually earlier than this one now these two I actually brought from my farm they weren't doing too well at my farm just because i wasn't able to irrigate them as often but like i said i love the fact that i just brought it here and it started growing so fast but as you see this pepec chong atemoya overall will do really good here in the future i am going to prioritize these atemojas as far as space but over here you know they have really no competition in this area so these pepec chong atemojas should just do really fine as you see i'll show you where the other one is it's right over here and this is the other one that is doing a little better just because i believe the spot it's in you know this this ppc is doing really good so as you see right here is where the pepec chong atemojas were and the other one is just right over here you know, not too far away from it. But the other atemoya that I recently just planted is right over here, right behind it, which is the Lisa atemoya. Now this Lisa atemoya is doing really well. It's actually already flowering. So let's take a closer look at it. So right over here, we have a better look at the Lisa atemoya tree. And as you see, this Lisa atemoya is already pushing out beautiful, strong new flowers. Now this Lisa atemoya was actually purchased from my friend Sai in Wesley Chapel, but she bought the trees from zill nursery so this lisa at the Mojo overall is just really healthy from zills as you see it's pushing out this new beautiful new growth all over and also this one is going crazy with flowers on almost every brand but i actually won't let this lisa flower or fruit or i mean you know hold fruit actually just because the last lisa i actually had at my house i bought from fruitscapes and it was in a 15 gallon or something it was about 150 dollars maybe it was in a 25 but anyways, I ended up pollinating every Lisa flower and ended up, you know, having a tree have a slow death on me. But overall, I just learned my lesson and I'm going to let this Lisa grow really nice. I'm going to let it take its time. I'm going to prune it accordingly. And, you know, I'm going to let it grow. I'm going to let the roots develop for a good two years plus until we actually fruit it. Now, there is actually another Lisa at the Monde that I did plant as well. And I forgot to show you it's located in the front of my house, but I just want to show you this Lisa at the Monde how beautiful it is and the good spot it has. As you see here is the tag, Lisa at the Moya. Wow, and look at these flowers under here. I didn't even realize, you know, these big flowers of the Lisa at the Moya. This one will probably bloom 
within another maybe two or three days. It just looks like, you know, it's that size. But like I said, I'm not gonna hand plant them or anything. I'm gonna let them grow as they want to. So I wanna show you the proximity of with this Lisa Atemonia compared to the other Lisa Atemonia, which is actually right over there in the front of our house. Now this Lisa Atemonia, I have good plans for, you know, I'm gonna grow it really ornamentally. It's gonna be really beautiful with the fruit. But I also have another Lisa Atemonia in the front which gets great sun and I have the same plans for so I want to show you guys that Lisa at the Moya just so we kind of keep track of it along my videos you kind of know of where they are so from this one it's actually over here right in the front of my property right over here and we have to go out this gate so this is where the Lisa at the Moya tree is as you see it stands right here right in front of my property and as you see right here it gets pretty good afternoon shade but this Lisa at the Moya is just really beautiful too the leaf looks really nice and fuzzy overall it stands about three and a half feet tall just like the other Lisa at the Moya but as you see right there and the base is pretty thick overall but this one too we're really looking forward to the growing season so we're almost done with the front yard and you know I'm seeing all the known is over here before we move on to the middle yard which we have some more interesting known as such as relinias and llamas so we actually do have sugar apples planted around just in different areas of my yard. As you see right here is that a sugar apple that I have and I do have a cherry lotta graft on this one. And there are a few unknown varieties worth mentioning up here such as some Atemoya seedlings I have and you know some other sugar apples that we're gonna briefly breeze over before I move on to the middle of my house. So I do have some sugar apples like I said in pots all over my house. For example this is one in a 30 gallon container I believe. I got that from Big Lots or something the the pot itself but overall as you see these sugar apples I believe are the Nadai Vietnamese variety and as you see all over they're just pushing out this strong new beautiful growth and not only that but these sugar apples are actually flowering all over for example here's a flower on the sugar apple that is coming out as you see it kind of looks like the cherry lotta flowers as far in size but actually speaking of cherry lotta i did graft a cherry lotta right here as you see this is the cherry lotta and i did um cleft graft i believe and right there it is pushing out as you see right here it is pushing out so you know fingers crossed we'll see if it actually pushes out but it's pretty cool to see that uh cherry lotta can graft onto Anona Scomosa. So here's something you guys might find interesting. These are all actually seedlings of Atemoya. These are AP Atemoya seedlings. Now a lot of these seedlings are actually really like really rigorous growing. A lot of them, there's actually a lot of variation in the in the sizes of their leaves. For example, we're gonna take a closer look at them. So as you see, these Atemoya seedlings are about a year old now. As you see, the leaves appear to be kind of like kind of like a Gefner Atemoya or a regular Atemoya leaf. They're kind of pointy, but also are kind of big like Cherimoya. But as you see, on some of them you actually have some leaves that are like really round shaped so it's actually pretty cool i like that it's kind of like a cherimoya but then you see it's kind of growing out of that back into its atemoya genetic now some of them are doing better than others you know some of them are just really lanky and then while others some have just gotten eaten up by the bugs but overall i'm just gonna really look forward to kind of growing these out and fruiting them seeing what you know varieties we get what genetics we get now someone told me that when you grow an atemoya from seed sometimes you get a either superior sugar apple or it reverts back to a cherimoya usually a superior cherimoya so we'll see but you know often sometimes you get a variety that is really good and you know so that is what i'm really looking forward to so speaking of seedlings these are just actually sugar apple seedlings that i got from colombia now these are all anona squamosa seedling sugar apples and i do have to separate them because what i did is i just literally tossed them on top of the dirt and they all are popping up as you see these are just popping up right now these little baby uh, anona squamosas but as you see this is the anona squamosa leaf and all the seedlings the anona squamosa is really easy to germinate here in florida you just really gotta uh, toss them and let them grow and eventually you know i'll separate them into their own pots kind of like this and uh, they'll grow right there and i'll just use them you know eventually as rootstock but also on the topic of seedlings i do want to show you my soursop seedlings my nona mercata seedlings actually from colombia now the soursops that these seedlings came from are really huge and oh my god the soursops are delicious and actually i do have to put these in their own individual pots i probably should water this uh, soursop tray just because they do look like they need water but as you see right over here i actually do have individually bagged soursops right here and this is just an example of one soursop seedling i have it's in a grow bag i got from colombia as well but these soursops i'll probably grow out for another maybe two or three years in some of these pots you know i'll obviously put them in bigger pots and some of them I'll also plant at my farm and also here too at my house so i'm really looking forward to these uh, colombian soursops and as you see i have so many soursops i have at least like i think a hundred plus sour sops i kid you not you know just amongst everything these are the nadai vietnamese sugar apple flowers 
as you see these will probably open up in about i would say another two to three weeks maybe even a month but all over like i said this one is just pushing out new foliage and pushing out strong new growth so i'm really looking forward to fruiting this anona squamosa here this season because ooh, i love anona squamosa and i really love the vietnamese variety it is really chewy has a really good meat to seed ratio and overall i just really like the, um, how the canopy looks of this anona squamosa of the sugar apple all right everyone so let's move to the middle of the property now where we have some cooler anonas such as a llama and also relinia and some atemoides as well so here we are in the middle of my house now i really like this part because in this area i'm actually able just to do a freestyle i'm actually able to plant whatever i want and my parents won't bother me and all other areas i kind of have to plant certain things like a certain way because they like it to look pretty but actually this part in the middle of my house is on mine so i kind of went crazy i'm planting a lot of things on a lot of anonas so I just want to start off by pointing out this right here. This is actually Anona Squamosa and I recently planted this right here just because I wanted to kind of have the concept of one day walking down here and just seeing, you know, a bunch of ripe big fruits of Anona Squamosa, you know, sugar apples here hanging. And believe it or not, this area right here gets really good sun. As you see, I have like all sorts of fruits here. I have papaya, you know, just growing. And um, like I said too, so I actually see an Anona that I think all you guys are going to be really interested in, which is the red Alama. So let's actually go check that out right now. So right here is the Anona diversifolia, which is also known as Alama. Now this is the red Alama variety. And as you see, it literally stands about 15 feet tall. I kid you not guys. So recently I pruned back a lot of things so we can actually see it better. And right now it's actually growing out its new growth. So we really can't uh, see it as prominently as we will in a few more months. But as you see, let me just show you kind of like how tall it is compared to this Alama tree just towers me. And it's funny because I literally planted this last year and it was like literally not even half the size. And you might be wondering why am I growing it out so lanky and so branchy. And the reason why is because I, I want to graft this onto pond apple rootstock in the future, which I have abundantly on my farm in the ground right now growing, which this alama is planted onto pond apple rootstock. So we know currently that uh, red alama is really compatible with pond apple. So is cherry lada. So that's why I have a lot of, uh, you know, that's why I want to grow out my cherry lada and I want to grow out my alama just because I want to have a lot of viable uh, budwood in the future to graft. So I want to show you approximately where the llama is in my food forest. As you see, when I was walking right over there, it's just right here. You know, it's really centered. I really picked a good spot for it because when I first found about this Anona, it was classified as the king of Anonas, which is kind of which is kind of true. You know, the llama is just a really big fruit, and over where it's native in, it just grows really big. So here's a better look of the red llama tree. As you see, the foliage that it's pushing out is really is beautiful. It looks green for now, but as you see, the reason why it's called a red llama is because well, the fruit is red, but as you see, the new growth actually is red itself. You see the beautiful kind of hues of red over there, and this leaf right here is kind of like a really dark red, almost like a purplish. But believe it or not, this alamo is actually covered by the lemongrass and I recently cut it back. So this right here is, this dead leaf right here is just uh, sunburned just because like I said, this alamo was covered before. So I'm just cutting it back just so it gets full sun now. Now as you see, as you see these alamo leaves are just really beautiful growing and all over the alamo is just pushing out new growth. As you see right above here, you know, we can barely reach, but all the new growth is just looking really good in the, new, in the hot sun. And this alama is just waiting for the rains to come up. So this alama, I kid you not, stands like 15 feet tall. And most of the new growth is on the more on the top portion of the tree. And that is because that's just where it receives more of the sun. And that's another reason why I am growing out the llama, just because it is able to kind of rage for the sun over here, just because in this high density garden, I can't really grow things more horizontally. I have to grow them more vertical, you know, vertical being straight up and down other than you know wider so overall i'm just really liking how this llama branched out just because i actually heard people in my zone 9b have a llamas and some of them have actually died you know not have made it back from the winter but i think that's just because of microclimate you know everything can be fixed because microclimate and as you see right here i definitely provided one for this llama as you see we just have a lemon grasses that are recently chopped back and as you see this mexican sunflower also was huge and did provide uh you know nice warm for this llama but now that we're in springtime i cut it all back and let this llama grow but as you see overall i'm just really looking forward to this beautiful llama growth it's just a really beautiful tree and the leaves are just you know very showy leathery and they're just uh, really nice to have in the garden here is a llama leaf that is really red as you see that's why it gets the name red llama and also the flower and the fruits are really red as well so it's just really pretty to see the the similarities 
So here's an anona that everyone seems to love, and that anona is the Relinia Deliciosa. Now this Relinia tree I absolutely love here at my house, just because number one of the healthy foliage that it has. Now overall this tree from the start that I planted it, which was about last year, so it's been in the ground for about a year now, but ever since I planted it, it literally like tripled in size. Now the variety of this Relinia, I'm honestly not too sure of, but I did get it from my Thai friend, and she didn't know either, but overall, the spot that it's in is doing really well. Now I actually have grown about two or three other Relinias here in my house, but I've killed them or I've moved them to another spot because they weren't doing as well as this one is currently. And the things that I've learned here about growing Relinia in zone 9B and especially here in Bradenton, Florida, is they're kind of sensitive to high winds. So I actually had two planted out in the front where we saw the cherry lata and other Atemoja varieties, but unfortunately it died because of the high winds that I was getting up there. So overall, this one is just doing really good. And Relinia Deliciosa itself, the tree I've heard being grown as north as central Florida. So I have a friend actually in Orlando growing Relinia and he's actually fruited it. So I know, and there's actually, believe it or not, a Relinia variety called Orlando. Uh, and I believe the story behind that is just a really neat that someone grew from seed in Orlando, Florida that actually grew really well and it was super productive. So yeah, uh, Verlini is a great tree to grow if you're in Central Florida or if you're in a little more North Florida, you know, go ahead you can more than likely grow relinia, you know, given a microclimate and everything else. And this relinia tree, believe it or not, is in a microclimate. And this relinia, the base is not too thick, but it is grafted. I do know this relinia was grafted. I think the union is somewhere along here. But overall, my goal or plan with this relinia is to let it grow for another two years and then and then fruit it hopefully in the future. Now, I did actually flower this relinia last year, but I decided not to hand pollinate it just because, like I said, I recently planted it and I just didn't really want to, uh, you know, stress it out too much. But overall, I really love this relinia tree, you know, it's just such a beautiful tree and I do plan to let it grow pretty big amount, pretty big. It's right here actually next to the Cecropia. So I believe the Cecropia growing next to this should be pretty good. You know, I believe the fruit combination will look really good in the future when we have the Verlinias hanging and then the Cecropia. I think it'll look really cool. So overall, I really love this Verlinia Dilly Shelsi tree right here at my house. It's kind of like in the in the beginning of the walkway. So in the future, I just want to like walk down here and I just want to see a big Verlinia hanging and pick it. I think that would be really cool because that's how I kind of have it in Colombia at our farm. As you see, this is just to give you a better look on the Verlinia Dilly Shelsi, the leaves actually very pink looking right here i mean is right here is kind of like a little pinkish new growth but overall the leaves are just very healthy as well and the overall like growth and this the way the tree looks is just really nice i'm really looking forward to this one to fruit for us in the future now we actually did pass right by it but we actually have a prisi atemoje right here now this prisi atemoje i recently just planted along with the other atemojes out in the front the lisa and uh, gefner so this priestly Atemodia, I do have high hopes for it. Now, believe it or not, I actually did have a priestly here in the past, but it didn't do too well. And overall, so I'm really looking forward to this priestly Atemodia here. I believe it just needs some mulch, you know, and needs some, and with the spring rains, I do believe that it'll grow much more. It's just not as vigorous as my Gavkar and Lisa. So but that's all I'm saying, but I do believe that you know, with little love, it'll grow much more. So here's the priestly atemoja. As you see, the leaves are similar to the other atemoja. They're kind of like just rounded, kind of pointed like this. And as you see, this priestly is overall, like I said, it's not the most vigorous atemoja that we have here growing at my house, but it's just a, nonetheless a priestly atemoja and hopefully we can really let it grow. Although this lower growth is not looking too too good, this leaf, but this one's looking good. So that is the Prisi Atemoja. Now I do wanna show you guys this one Atemoja over here before we wrap up this video. So right over here next to the llama, we actually have another Gefner Atemoja. So this Gefner Atemoja, believe it or not, is still very small and we still have a lot of babying to do. But as you see overall, this Gefner Atemoja is pushing out really good. I actually bought this Gefner Atemoja from Fruitscapes. My friend Nick actually sold it to me and it is kind of pruned a certain way. It's pruned so it kind of it kind of grows more wide kind of horizontally and that is the way we're going to let it kind of grow as you see overall this governor at the moja is doing pretty good right here in this spot i actually planted some pineapples you know amongst it but as you see overall it's just growing pretty good right here I'm really looking forward to to growing this one better. You know, a lot of people told me that Gefner Atemoja is literally the only Atemoja that you need. It's a really good tasting Atemoja and overall, as the tree matures, you get really good tasting Gefners and you know, Gefner is a self-pollinating variety. So it's like kind of like a hassle-free 
almost like a variety that you really need if you're gonna you know grow anonas or have an anona collection now right here in the back portion right next to the llama and stuff we do have some anonas that i'm briefly going to go over with you so right here we actually have a red custard apple from seed now this red custard apple is in kind of a shady spot so it isn't pushing out growth as vigorous as the ones out in the front of the yard but nonetheless it is pushing out somewhere so we're really just going to wait on this governor at the monja so we're really just going to wait on this anona reticulata to grow on us as you see the base is actually pretty good you know it's pretty thick so you know we'll see how this how this reticulata plays out for us now back here i also have some things like this is another nadiabinami sugar apple now this sugar apple really hasn't grown too much i mean it has pushed out new growth but last year it didn't really flower for us and this year it doesn't really look like it's gonna flower for us so i believe on this one what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna let it grow big kind of uh, so it gets more sun because it just needs to grow more higher up to reach the sun you know but nonetheless we're gonna let it grow and right back here i actually planted another anona recently this is actually anona montana also known as the mountain soursop as you see the anona montana leaves are actually very glossy glossier than a regular soursop leaf and the leaves actually kind of come out kind of like a different texture too and wow they actually have a really weird kind of scent to them it's still really aromatic like a regular soursop but it kind of has like mixture with like a citrus tone to it i just smelled it for my first time it's actually really good i like it so we're really going to look forward to this soursop anona montana to grow here anona montana is used for a rootstock here in florida a lot so we're going to you know try to grow that here and also so right over here right next to this anona montana we actually have anona mercata which is a soursop regular soursop now, believe it or not, this Sarasop was actually also air layered and this one I'm having problems with too here in zone 9B. I've heard other people have problems with their Sarasop in zone 9B. My friends at Solcata Grove have actually fruited Sarasop and that's in Sarasota, which is not too far from me. So I know it's possible and I, and I know people have fruited Sarasop north of me in Tampa. So I definitely know it's possible because I'm 45 minutes south of Tampa and yeah. I just, I think it's because this is a air layered soursop and I'm really looking forward to planting out my soursop from seed from Colombia here uh, because I do believe that we can get a fruit from it, uh, you know, and, but I am going to leave this soursop here in the ground because I just see some growth is promising, but we'll see if this continues like this and my other soursop, I'm removing it. But overall, I'm really looking forward to, you know, all my nonas growing here in the future. So thank you guys all for watching this video on all the nonas I have here growing at my house in Bradenton, Florida. Now, I actually didn't cover all the nonas, you know, I did leave a lot out like different nona squamosas and pods and, you know, different seedlings here and there because I literally have so much nonas here that I have to cover. But overall, you'll probably see all my other nonas in my other videos that I post. But I'm really looking forward to seeing the development of all my nonas you know, growing over the years and seeing them fruit and sharing them all and sharing the experience with you. But so far here in April, 2021, so far all the Anona growth have been really strong, really good looking, and it's just a really good start for the for the Anona season of 2021. So thank you guys all for watching this video. I'm Harley from Garden NFL. And if you love Anonas, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have an Anona that I don't have here at my house and think I should grow it, please drop that in the comments because as you know, I'm Anona crazy and I wanna collect all the Anonas if I can or if I can just grow them in a pot. So everyone, thank you guys so much. And if you don't have an Anona at your house growing, Please go get you an Anona and plant it at your house today. I promise you, you'll be so happy in the few years to come. So thank you guys so much. This is Harley from Garden NFL, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye now.